Hey guys, and welcome back to part four of Skies of Arcadia Legends. Last time we entered a giant wall, and now we're on the inside of the wall. Welcome to Valua. Jeez. The very dark place. As I mentioned, the moon's different colors have different effects on different parts of the world. The moon over Valua is a yellow moon, which has the power of electricity. Hence, there being power running through the city. Here is the main palace. And the way the city works... It has a major social and economic disparity. One side of the land is all the upper class citizens in this really nice, super rich area, known as the higher city, and the lower city is where all the poorest of the poor live. Um, but they're very separated and they all hate each other. So we're going to be landing in lower city so Drachma can get his ship upgrade and get his harpoon that he wants. And the depressing music hits, because this place is depressing. Wow. Detroit. <laughs> wow, look at this shithole. <laughs> wow, this place smells like garbage. Well, this place is garbage, is the thing. So your kids find a garbage hotel. I'm gonna go attach mm. some garbage to my ship. <laughs> I love you, Drachma. Everything's free here, don't worry. <laughs> they might stab you, though. That's just how things are here. It's a way of saying hello. And goodbye. By the way, Drachma punches him one time and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> no, he leaves, and he comes back, punches him, walks back out. <laughs> then he goes, wait a minute, walks back with the harpoon about to hit Vice. He's like, no, 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 no! <laughs> So I end up starting this on a different day, hence the kind of cut here, um, because this part's pretty long. And this is what I also call the uh, entrance exam of this game, because this is where the uh, difficulty curve can cut off some of the more beginner players, because it gets a little tougher at this point. If you know what you're doing, it's fine. But this is where you really need to learn how the game mechanics work pretty well. I like to explore a little bit to get the feel of the city. It looks pretty shitty. But there are a couple of uh, different kind of shops and items we want to stop at. Surprisingly, for a shithole, it does have some pretty decent merchandise. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, this place has shops. It's got this bomb. Overseen by the pretty shitty committee. <laughs> <laughs> the itty bitty shitty committee. <laughs> the itty bitty pretty shitty committee. <laughs> so a lot city. of people of this uh, particular city, this itty bitty shitty city, um, <laughs> are a lot of people that work on the industry of uh, this particular city, <laughs> this itty bitty city that's shitty. Um, <laughs> they are primarily the people that work from dusk till dawn, uh, building ships, building weapons and things like that for the uh, Armada and the Empire. So they're your working day poor sons of bitches that the particular country takes advantage of. And hey, these guys look familiar. These are the poor twins of the ones in Sailor <laughs> Island. The poor twins? I like this one where it's just like, yeah, I got some stuff for sale. Please just buy something, whatever. Just do. <laughs> Puts the trash can on the counter. There's this. <laughs> I do highly recommend at this point to, for one, I'm selling the bomb. I'm doing this to spite Thorn because I know why he told me to use it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. I figured out your shit. <laughs> Look, I wasn't even thinking about fucking Bomberman when I said that. <laughs> see, see, the one thing you do want to buy is a lot of Curia crystals. I buy a little too many, but whatever. Because there's going to be some elements of poison and different status effects at this part, so we need what we need. I love how you recorded your paranoia. That's great. Well, look, I, I just, I had a feeling I thought about it, like, wait, why do you want to use the bomb so bad? <laughs> no, I am not linking Bomberman to this game. <laughs> Fuck you. No, it's because I wanted you to use it on your own ship. Okay, <laughs> just blow up the whole whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting us fly to Valua blows up half of the ship. Sorry, <laughs> destroyed the little jack. <laughs> so at this point, we would just really want to upgrade, uh... Don't punch me anymore, Ica's, bitch. <laughs> Ica's weapon, and we want to pick up some Valuan armor for Drachma. But at first I was like, Drachma or Vice? Vice gets a much larger boost. Oh, shit. Um... I think Vice could use it. Yeah, Vice can definitely use a lot more. There's some extra <laughs> items in here. We don't really need much of that stuff. We might come back later. No hook hand? We already own a hook hand. We bought it at Sailor Island. Oh. <laughs> I wish it was in the character model, though. 
It is when uh, he's fighting, but yeah, they keep. I, it's like he switches to a robotic hand for normal use. But you'll also notice that um, Vice's weapon kind of does the same thing. Look how depressed this lady is. Have you seen my husband? That's the first thing she says. <laughs> how do I know? <laughs> well, I don't know what he looks like. I'm your husband. Let's go. <laughs> This one, just depressing statements like, you just gotta keep smiling so you don't want to kill yourself. <laughs> Power goes out as soon as you see that. <laughs> the light bulb falls from the ceiling and smashes over her head. <laughs> I keep smiling. I guess I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I must be bright. And there's also, <laughs> this, this is a broke dog. <laughs> I was like that character now. <laughs> oh yeah, here's this stupid kid. It's the ruffian kid, it's like you're on my turf. This kid shows up a lot. Sailors are stupid. I'd be like boogers. That booger was stupid. I don't go to school because it's stupid. <laughs> Plus it burnt down. <laughs> from being too poor. From being too stupid. <laughs> no one wanted to go to the itty bitty shitty elementary. <laughs> elementary. <laughs> so we're just like, hey, fuck you, kid. You're a child. Go away. And he's just like, baka and runs away. <laughs> Oh, come on, Vice, you could have said some cool stuff there. And then he just stands there and then takes my shit. <laughs> it takes your stuff? Well, no, I mean, like, he's like, like, yeah, I'll get you guys. Oh, I thought he actually robbed you and Vice wasn't just gonna do anything. <laughs> well, kid, that was, uh, that was brave of you. He looks like he needs the money more than we do. I love this bartender logo. He does give us some important information. He tells us that um, our father and our crew are going to be executed at the Coliseum tomorrow. And he's going to conduct the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> he's telling you via opera. <laughs> it looks like he's trying to be a one-handed mime. The Coliseum! Your father will die. <laughs> ah, well, this is my hands a paper airplane. He's whoosh. It's it's almost like he's doing that thing you do at like a beatbox competition. <laughs> Just let me break it down for <laughs> any pretty <laughs> shitty committee in the city. I hope these girls don't have chlamydia. Ugh. Chlamydia. <laughs> ugh. We call that a poor rep. We go down the poor elevator. <laughs> that breaks down. <laughs> Just tumbles down. <laughs> Sorry, we have a hard time getting it back up. Um, it's only been eight minutes. Come on. <laughs> that guy needs new contacts. Seriously. I just talk a lot because you learn how shitty this place is. This place is really shitty. <laughs> Ends up being the itty bitty shitty committee city. <laughs> oh boy, itty bitty pretty shitty city. And this little girl's like, I love drawing pictures of things that are rich. <laughs> Not me, though. God. See, she's never eaten white bread, only hard black oh, bread. Oh, Jesus. They really People never chip their teeth on that bread. <laughs> People never chip their teeth on edible things. I'm not drawing with chalk. This is actually a shard of glass. <laughs> <laughs> she's drawing off the nub of her finger. This is a callus. I'm drawing with calluses. <laughs> God. Yeah, it's a steel mill, hence the air being a little bit polluted and nasty. I'm just taking a little bit of a look around because we're already right where the uh, inn is. <laughs> Barrel over the kid. <laughs> oh, come on, the kid doesn't need that. There is a pour in here. Huh. Do you like my buttons? They're happy. Now pay a room or get out. Why are all of the buttons placed where they don't need to be? Each button was a satisfied customer. I only had five. I see four. <laughs> the other one didn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> so we go into our mesh beds. I love how the like when they walk up, it's like, oh man, it's been forever since we slept in a warm bed. And then you look at this disgusting room. 
<laughs> See, like, I just can't wait to lay on this comfy bed. <laughs> And even she's like pillows and blankets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to touch that. Clang! <laughs> I got a spring up my butt. Sorry. <laughs> it's the ceiling. <laughs> Cause the ceiling to collapse. <laughs> Crows coming through the hole. <laughs> There's a guy taking a bath and falls in the room. I'm bathing in! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, apparently uh, Vice has been forced to sleep on a hammock in the engine room. So, because Drogba doesn't like Vice. <laughs> God damn it, Drogba. Dissing my ship as soon as I walk in, you jerk. Punch. <laughs> Onto the bed, he falls asleep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Look, I got weird narcolepsy, all right? So we're talking about, like, what's happening with the uh, execution. The interesting thing is the game does it in different ways. If we didn't talk to the bartender to find out about the execution, Drachma walks in and tells us about the execution. So we find out at this point. Since we found out about it, we're just kind of discussing it differently. So it does actually change how the cinematic works. Now here's the swashbuckler moment. What do we do? I, 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 don't, I don't know. That's not cool. You sneak in, that's what you do. You don't charge through a coliseum in the middle of the city. Let's save them! Now! No, I know, but... How? <laughs> how? Let's save them! <laughs> the, we're pirates. We, we know how to do this. This is natural instinct. He looks a lot shorter right now. Yeah! <laughs> He's not a tall guy, he's a really buff guy. He's also my MVP of this Valuan part, so... Gotta love Drachma. Just needed to elbow that invisible ghost. God, I hope no one heard us. Oh god, who heard us? Alright, help me up. Boing! <laughs> Flies through the roof, <laughs> right back in the bed, and falls asleep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm real tired. I was just like, you know what? I, I got it. I got it. So there's just a little mini part where you have to chase after him. If you go in a certain order here, uh, you do get a special item. So I'm doing that order right now. You get ahead of him, and he bumps into you, and he drops an item. You get a sacred crystal. And then he's just like, well, see ya. Um, <laughs> so you gotta chase him. He's doing the Naruto run thing. Yeah, he is. I'm doing the face first jump. <laughs> so, like, we're, not, we're in no hurry because look how long it takes him to do this. <laughs> <laughs> what a loser. That's awesome. <laughs> like his face, too. Just meh. <laughs> you didn't realize he was a kid until you caught him? Okay, I put you down, loser. <laughs> Drops him in the hole. You stupid street rat. Did they just show up finally and just like, what the hell, that stupid kid again? Everyone <laughs> hates children. <laughs> oh, he's got you there, Ike. Oh, he's just like, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> you got you stupid. Well, I'm gonna kill you now, so. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thanks, Drachma. <laughs> you have a way of bringing things home. Of course, he doesn't care. He lives in the shittiest city of all time. <laughs> the itties bittiest of shittiest cities. And he's just like, no one cares if I die. No, it's better than having to dig through garbage bin for food. Which most likely started as garbage and ended up in the garbage can anyway. Good point. Drachma right! <laughs> That's what he said. He's just like, good point. I'm just gonna kill you then. <laughs> A hole in the ground. It's it's called a sewer. Vice. He, he calls it a catacomb. And sewer. That's where he lives. <laughs> Aw. So, eh, uh, clicking it together. Uh, it goes into the city. We can get in the costume that way. Uh. 
So he has an animation of him laughing. Because he's just sitting like, that's impossible, you idiots. <laughs> what are you, sky pirates or something? Don't answer that question. I imagine him laughing like a squeaky toy. No, no, you imagine his voice. Just wait till you actually hear his voice. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you, you'd give up, you big bully. <laughs> that's, what he, that's a perfect face for it, though. Oh, Marco, you. I could just can't put all the pots away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're poor and I'm not. So... Vice is being his usual super duper confident self where he's just like, you can't give up on shit because if you give up on shit, what's the point of living? And he's just like, oh no. So tomorrow we're going to wake up really early and go down into the sewer. Sounds like fun, right? Yeah. The interesting thing about the sewer is the underground catacombs and sewer are part of a system that is the ancient Valuan Empire which no one really knows much about. And also, Vice was in a good way. Hey, you know what? We're, we'll probably die in the Coliseum anyway, so why don't you come and see it? So, he's just like, meh. Meh. <laughs> Punch. That'd be funny that the sleeping box just breaks because it's poor. <laughs> Bing, ding, ding, ding. I imagine they don't have an alarm, it's just a bird. <laughs> but Vice still slaps it like an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> they were Al-Seep. Yep. So, uh, imagine how depressing a place this would be. It's always dark. It always God. looks like night because the clouds. So the rich people bought the sun? Well, they bought, they had pretty much most electricity. <laughs> I feel like Drogum is just like, I don't have to be here. I mean, <laughs> I got, I got my ship. <laughs> Drogum, can you even fit in the hole? Good, oh, good point. You got kids to go by yourselves. I mean, <laughs> okay. There's a point where uh, I know I just couldn't remember, but I know somewhere around here's a moonberry, and I really need it. So I'm kind of trying to remind myself where it is. So if I'm walking around aimlessly, I apologize. I'm trying to figure this out. But I really want a moonberry because. Although we have taught Drachma the move Tackle, there's one other move that really makes this part much easier that we need Drachma to learn. But it requires two Moonberries, I only have one right- or actually, I don't think I have any right now. But I need to find at least this one. See, this is where we were chasing the kid earlier, we're just taking the long way down. <laughs> so we did the cool pirate way before, but you can't do it again? That was the only point in the game where I ever did- where I ever do something like that. Aww. So we go behind these. Well, I completely forget. I'm stupid. I just walked where I'm supposed to go. Travis, stop being stupid. Go back. Come on, past Travis. You can do it. That's where I need to go, but I don't want to go yet. Come on, Travis. Stop it. You're looking at it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm like, damn it. You want to? You don't. You just don't want to give yourself cancer. <laughs> he puts his arms on his hip. Wait a minute, I know where it is. I mean, come on. I've been in this city forever, so I mean, breathing in all the soot. I don't think being there by those barrels would have made much of a difference. That This is like the complete separation of uh, economic disparity, where one per side of it is dirt poor, like impoverished. The other side is wealthy way beyond necessity. So like Alfonso was born in Upper City, obviously. So if you didn't hate him already... Exactly. What I like is that this kind of develops each land a little bit differently, so you kind of learn how the culture of this place works. And, uh, and there we go. Come on, Charlie. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's a little hidden cave behind here. And a hidden house. Pirate. <laughs> Pirate coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and they just have a moonberry and a chest up here, so I got what I wanted. Way to go, Vice! You robbed from the poor! <laughs> da, 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 da. See, I need to learn that second move really badly, because it's such a good move. So now we're going to be heading into the dungeon part of this level.
I could have at this point, looking back, I could have spent time buying more uh, healing items. But, uh, whatever, we're fine. Obviously, I beat this part, I wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> You know, honestly, half the time I keep expecting the ladder to just break. <laughs> just in this place. <laughs> Alright. Down the sewer. Now, this is an area where definitely you'll want to take opportunities to level grind. Because the coming up parts are going to be a little difficult otherwise. Another place with interesting music, too. Interesting light fixtures. This place gives much of a, like, a techno-gothic feeling to it. Now, because these people are under the yellow moon, a lot of these people have electric attacks. Um, electric attacks have a combination of different effects. One of which is when they cast spells, usually uh, yellow spells go in a straight line, so if there's one person in front of you and one person behind you, they'll most likely both get hit. Hit the slime, those guys cast that murder spell I told you about. Oh. At this point, this is like your first introduction to that spell. So for first time players that get killed by that, you're like, I hate this dungeon. <laughs> you just turn off the game and that's it. But there's some really good gear down here uh, that you definitely don't want to miss. And I'm going to show you where that stuff is. Also, I'm going to show you that my editing skills aren't that shitty, Thorn. <laughs> I never said they were shitty. I said they weren't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say they were garbage, but I also didn't say they were good. <laughs> I didn't say they were garbage, and it said they weren't acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I do make the, the cuts off of fights a little smoother now. You'll see. You can see how it transitions from like the standard sewer to more of this ancient civilization here. Bloop, 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 bloop. And all this disgusting green sewage. This place is a pretty straightforward little dungeon. There's just a couple little alcoves that contain treasure chests you want to notice. And definitely not skip over, because a lot of the stuff is really useful for this part and just good. Yeah, I was about to say, since you're in a sewer, there's going to be like a million little entrances and little caves and stuff, but I'm glad to see it's not like that at all. Well, technically it's a catacomb. Right. But it doesn't feel like one. Like, there's these little off paths, like, right here. But they close off. You'll see they just dead end real quickly, and there's a couple chests to pick up. One of them contains a Pyrie box, which is a reusable multiple times casting for the spell Pyrie item. So I could have a one of my characters cast Pyrie without using MP and things like that. But eventually the box will break after a certain amount of uses. That's how a lot of spell boxes work. Generally, the more powerful the spell, the shorter time it'll last. It's good in the early game, not so good in the later game. So kind of like the spell scrolls and Elder Scrolls? Sort of, yeah. That's kind of like, you know how I mentioned that the healing spells are called like Sacri and Curia, and those are the name of the spells? Mm -hmm. This is basically the same thing, but because it's an offensive spell, it works multiple times. One of the items I picked up here was the Assassin Blade. That's a better weapon for Vice. And heavy armor is going to be good for Drachma. The advantage, particularly of this weapon, also is that it has a, sh a slight chance of poisoning the enemy that it hits. That's pretty cool. And poison is a pretty powerful effect, especially against your enemies, because they usually have a lot less HP than you. Also, something good happens to me. I show this fight um, because this fight gets me a very useful item. This is one of the reasons also you want to level grind in this area. There's a couple different enemies here. We have a crystal-looking cheetah dude, a couple of these reptile bunnies, and a zombie possessed by a bug. Huh. Things you'd find in your standard sewer. <laughs> I was going to point out, I like how the uh, weapons uh, actually change and have different designs. Oh yeah, that, that's a really nice touch. It reminds me of uh, Tales of Symphonia. Oh, I thought Vice was being eaten by a bug. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> just standing there taking it. 
You can see their corpses being controlled by these insects. See, he's already got the hook hand, so he's good. Is it over already? Poison himself. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he cuts his back again. See, the nice thing I got from this is the mace hand. Um, that's a weapon for Drachma. It's a pretty rare drop. I call it the boss killer. What's good about it, I'm not going to equip it right now, but it's a weapon that he can wear that has a very, very, very high attack for this point of the game. But the trade-off is that it has, like, no accuracy at all. Doesn't sound like a great weapon, but here's the thing to keep in mind. That weapon, not too great when you're just doing regular attacks. When you're doing special attacks, special attacks don't miss. Ooh. So when you have a weapon like that, you basically attach it to when you're going into a boss fight, and then he hits, like, a fucking tank. Cool, so weapons don't have separate stats for attack and special attack. Right. Interesting. Now, the way they describe that sort of stuff, those special attacks kind of come in the more of the form of descriptions of magic. So, for example, if, uh, if a vice were to cast Pyre and Ica were to cast Pyre, they would do different levels of damage, depending on what they call will. But special attacks, their particular damage outputs are usually related in conjunction to the weapons they're using. So, in the case of... Uh, in the case we're dealing with Drachma, since you'd have that mace hand, which is an incredibly high-hitting weapon, it would do more damage than just his normal hook hand. Now, I want to do a little bit more level grinding because I know this area I want to get a little stronger before I continued. And this was definitely worth it. <laughs> Vice, you keep hogging all the victory screens. Holy, holy, holy. This is nice because you dropped another moonberry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I have two... Um, I can go back to Drachma here and teach him that move I really want to teach him. He focuses inward, doubling his spirit points and defending against attack. Spirit charge! It's basically like focus on steroids. He not only gets twice as many points from focusing, but he also goes into a defensive position. So he blocks attacks as well. So... Drachma is the purple Pikmin of this game, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a tank. He's the best tank in the game. Oh, what is that? So we're fighting this fat bastard. This guy is a big blob monster, as you see right here. He's very fat and he's full of skeletons. And he wants a hug. <laughs> he's a monster that sits below the Colosseum, so it gives you a good idea why he's fat. Basically, any body the Colosseum has throws it down here, and this little monster eats it. And it became really, really huge. Our primary focus here is kind of similar to what it was with the giant robot, but a little bit different because I mentioned... Uh, Drachma is one of the best tanks in the game, which means his special attack hits harder than Vice's special attack. So the best thing you can do at this point is obviously uh, casting Ingram is one of our big uh, strategies at the beginning to get them strong enough to do it. Um, I made a little mistake here why I accidentally blocked with Drachma. That was just a little quick mistake. But at this point I can still cast Ingram on both the people I need to. So him and Drachma are going to get that. You're going to see the big differences that makes. Now, go into your items, switch to the mace hand. Looks a little more badass. Oh, Jesus. And I'm going to use spirit charge majority of his turns. Doesn't even cost any magic. Exactly, that's what makes it great. It costs no uh, spirit points, but it gives you like two or three spirit points by doing it. Move. And he goes into a blocking position, so he doesn't really take any damage either. And he gets Incrum. Yep, and he gets Incrum. He gets a shotgun. And a jetpack. And rocket boots. And a dragon helper. He just goes wiggling over there. <laughs> and a tornado function. And the hook. <laughs> really, Vice is there just to whack on people. And honestly, the one thing I'm surprised about is that Blagok doesn't really do his special attack that much. His special attack is a pretty hard-hitting attack, though. Right now, I'll focus more on defensively building up my points for heavy hits. I noticed that he has a blade on his hip. He never uses it, does he? No, I think it, that's more of a utility knife versus anything. I doubt he'd use it as a weapon. I mean, keep in mind, he's a kind of a fisherman. All oh, right, it probably wouldn't be a cutlass then. He just bossed me with his stomach. <laughs> Boink. All right, now we're strong enough to do uh, Drachma's best attack. 
At least Tarako's best attack at this point. His move tackle. Now you'll find out how hard tackle is with that equipped and Inkrum. He's almost adorable. Until he vomits on you. Not so adorable. Okay, I misread it as poisonous bite, and I was about to say he didn't bite anything. <laughs> yeah, I read it as bite, too. Poisonous bile widespread attack that poisons people, but here comes tackle. Look how much damage this does. Wow. Okay, bullshit, first of all. <laughs> he just looked, he's like, fuck this. <laughs> so guess what I'm going to be doing to murder this guy? <laughs> uh, can I guess? What you just did? That's why uh, Drock was a badass. Because he has a defensive move that makes him build up points to be, be able to whack him with his big strong attack. One thing I never pointed out that, that I like about the uh, beat boss music uh, is that there's this atonal whistle in it. Uh-huh. Sounds like one of the characters is getting into the spirit. <laughs> this is weird. You can see st the skeletal structure of this monster inside of its kind of translucent tummy. Honestly, it just looks like a hood over those skulls. You know, I feel like when Drock was gonna do his attack, tackles would just be renamed to murder. <laughs> just so it could be like, yeah, it's his murder spell. Just wait. I mean, it's essentially electric giganto pistol. Shining burning finger, basically. <laughs> Alright, I think he's in trouble. Sh shining mace finger. Shining mace finger. So he tries to hit me with one more little attack, I'm just like, ah, whatever. I think that's its blood, it's not actually trying to fight you. <laughs> just leave me alone! <laughs> so I let, I'm gonna let uh, Vice get the killing blow here with Cutlass Fury. Why not? He's captain, after all. Was he? I couldn't tell. <laughs> well, technically Drachma's captain, but whatever. Main character. <laughs> And I cleave him in two. See, look at the da the damage difference. Almost a thousand points. Jeez. It's okay, Aiko. You're gonna kill a boss someday. She's not the boss killer. She's the support. We did it. Oh, she still gets the result screen, so that's good. Hey, let's you know, Vice didn't steal it. <laughs> yeah. And I picked up a vital seed. Um, there's various seeds in this game that are really just used as items to increase uh, characters' abilities. So. Vital Seed increases max HP by 30. Usually I just give these to Vice. Unless it's like a magic one or something like that, then I'll give it to the appropriate character. Because Vice isn't a magic character, so that doesn't matter. But you know, I have to. Vice needs to take more hits, so. HP! So at this point, one thing you want to remember is to unequip your mace hand when you're in normal circumstances. Because it kind of sucks in normal circumstances. It's the boss killer, but it's not the enemy killer. So I'm going back to save here. Another thing, this is a mistake that a lot of first time players of the game don't make. They don't go back and save here. You want to go back and save and you want to go back and heal. I've played so many RPGs in my day that saving is like all I do now. <laughs> well, in this case, it's kind of like if you don't do it, then you're going to regret it. And I don't know why I switched magics here. It all costs the same, but... Whatever, it's just a bad habit from other RPGs. Get her some MP back. So, you said that you could focus, like, any character you want to any color you want, right? So, right. So, couldn't you technically customize any character to be, like, a defense character or a support character, or no? Technically, I mean, they're, they're, uh, their stat alignment still works in certain ways, so technically I could make Vice a support character, although it doesn't suit him necessarily. Okay. That's pretty cool. They do have the pre-existing stats. 
Right. Yeah, it's, so it's kind of like, a, it kind of reminds me of Pokemon Natures, where it's like, oh, if this thing has a bold nature, its attack and speed are going to be the increased and decreased stat. Right, and you'd want to have abilities that suit that kind of uh, strength. Right. And before anybody in the comments points out, oh, Yoshi, bold nature doesn't do that, I just picked one at random, so shut up. <laughs> so, this is the execution area with the pictures of people in the background that don't move. This is the executioner. Big, mean-looking dude. Time to murder this guy who wants to protect his chin. I don't have a chin to protect. Because <laughs> I'm too poor. <laughs> just sitting there like, I knew they wouldn't show up. Oh, they just showed up. Whoop. <laughs> he may still manage to cover his chin, too. Perfect. Who showed up just right in the nick of time to get them the hell out of here? This is the Marine Ford arc, obviously. Oh, boy. So am I going to cry? I, I won't judge you if you do. <laughs> so this is why I told you to heal ahead of time. After that boss fight, guess what? We're going to have a boss fight. I can tell you that when you didn't know that, this guy would fuck you up. <laughs> Especially after he's just like, hey, he, you don't see any chance because we're going to kick your ass. And it's going to be a great show. By the way, my name's Vice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what he says. See, by the way, my name's Vice. <laughs> What's just the voice you give? I imagine he just said that in all, like, one text box. <laughs> and then he just executes like, what? <laughs> no punctuation. <laughs> but then, yeah, there's, like, no punctuation or spaces between the words. It's just mashed together. So we're dealing with the Executioner, who's a pretty tough guy on his own. Um, but the big thing is he also has these two magic spellcasters next to him, which are, like, normal enemies, but they also heal and have hard-hitting spells. This is where Ika becomes the MVP because she has a special ability that none of the other characters have that is probably the most, as I mentioned, one of the most useful special abilities in the game. Delta Shield. Delta Shield. So I want him to Spirit Charge, but she'll always cast this first. Delta Shield! Delta Shield, as I mentioned before, blocks any kind of spells from hitting your characters. That includes ones you target yourself with, but for a turn. Uh, this keeps magic casters from hitting you with any kind of murder spells or really powerful offensive spells. But it also means you can't heal yourself with magic either. That's why it's so cheap, because otherwise it'd be broken. See, that's me blocking a crystal spell, which is like an ice spell. Can't block this, though, because this is a special attack. A, sh a shield piercer. That's why Drakma can still do a spirit charge, because it's a special move, not magic. Right. So in this case, um... I'm kind of taking a chance here because I want to get them with Incrum, which means I won't be able to cast uh, Delta Shield this turn. Finger crossing, hoping that the uh, mages don't murder me with spells. Because honestly, getting uh, Drakma into super murder mode is my priority. <laughs> Moons, give me and honestly, uh, Vice serves a pretty big purpose on this as well. He's honestly the big uh, killer of the mages at this point, so I'm targeting him specifically to kill the two magic casters. See, so he cast a spell knowing I wasn't Delta Shielding at that point, but luckily he aimed at Drachma, who was blocking because of his special ability. <laughs> pretty sure he didn't feel that. And luckily also the two mages were defensive, so they weren't casting spells, so I lucked out. But now we're going to go back to the Delta Shield attack charge combination here. Delta Shield's a lifesaver. As I mentioned, there's going to be points later in the game where people can cast things that kill you, and that's the, that's the only purpose of the spell. One thing I forget to do and I regret is I don't I forget to switch to the, the mace hand on time at, uh, early in the game, but also he knows tackle, so this is why this can be a little bit tough. Uh. But this is where he looks out. He attacks Drachma, who's blocking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he can drive a battleship directly on a Drachma and it wouldn't hurt him. <laughs> he just punches the ship and explodes. <laughs> These mages are pretty weaklings, but they also know healing spells, so you want to kill them first so they don't heal the executioner. Obviously. You play any game, you kill the weaklings first, then you hit the big guy at the end.
And luckily, Delta Shield only costs two SP, so it's a cheap ability to use. And we can recommend it depending on the fight, you use it almost every turn. And Spirit Charts gives two back, so you don't exactly lose any. Exactly, it evens itself out. That's why I was so keen on him learning this move. Because this Ice Spell hits pretty hard. But not that I noticed. <laughs> but I can't tell. <laughs> You'll also notice that enemies tend to aim towards one character at a time, so they know how to aim for the weak character. And that's one mage down. I just need to kill the other one. The crowd's like, oh, finally something's happening. <laughs> See, this is the only dumb part that I do is that I, uh... I forget to switch to the mace to, for this initial tackle. Lucky I'm not going to use it yet. I'm going to use it to kill the spell warden first. Which means I should have a full gauge on the next turn, which means I can unleash hell. Jeez. So I just punch him across the room. <laughs> through the Coliseum, through the rich people town. I looked out because in this particular match, the Executioner only used Tackle once. A lot of times he uses Tackle quite frequently, so... And it hits hard if you don't block. It, it can kill Ika really quickly. That's why I'm healing her, because I know she can get killed pretty quick. And you notice I forgot to switch weapons, but... Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you can give Drachma a stick and he'll still do incredibly powerful damage. <laughs> he can kill Rockham with a stick. <laughs> That's what he puts into the harpoon cannon. See, he blocked though, so he actually took a lot less damage, which makes me waste a ton of SP on little damage. See, this is a strong attack even with his hook hand, it's just with the mace hand, it becomes Destructor X. <laughs> That didn't hurt internal bleeding. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying. Shut up. See, I remembered. I was like, ah, oh, well, I didn't have the mace hand on. There we go. Now I'm ready to murder him. <laughs> now I'm ready to hit you harder. The enemy gives up. <laughs> you don't have to, sir. <laughs> After doing these Super Saiyan powers up to murder you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! I mean... He's been using Sonic Wave a lot, which is a hard-hitting attack, but at this point, nah. Okay, you know how I mentioned that uh, Drachma's attack's ridiculous? Watch this. This just gets stupid. So you can see that Executioner is about half health right now, right? Yeah. Watch what happens to his health after this. And he's dead. Wow. <laughs> a critical, super <laughs> effective, you know. Critical hit, dead. It's not very effective. I like it gets up like, ah, oh, that's it, dies. <laughs> <laughs> so we impressed the crowd with our tackling skills. And we got an electric box, so another spell casting box. The crowd's on their feet for us. They can't show their faces because they're character clones, but whatever. Yay, somebody died at the Coliseum. He even takes a battle. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> and he escaped. <laughs> he flies back to his home planet. <laughs> <laughs> like he tried to act all cool about it. Like, ha ha, yeah. I think about trips, falls, hits head on the no, side. No, he jumps as Ike is closing the gate and he just lands on his feet. <laughs> 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 so he just stand there and just crickets. <laughs> He's like, if I don't look up, they won't mock me. Maybe if I bow. Again, it'll be fine. No, this has actually made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, for whatever reason, just because Yoshi, you've spent so much time talking about how kind of poor the area you live in is, I just imagine it's going to be like Lower City. Lower City? Where like the, the elevators fall and tumble down and... <laughs> I draw with my sadness. Aww. <laughs> poor little kid. It's white colored. The escalators are just regular stairs, so there's no point to them. <laughs> but they call them escalators. <laughs> exactly. At one point, these were escalators. No, they weren't. <laughs> I 
it's a spiral staircase. <laughs> <laughs> the future. <laughs> they don't let you go down the stairs because they say that's the up escalator. It's clearly stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next one now that we actually saved our father and our crew we need to find fina and then get the hell out of Valua. so wonder how we're gonna do that hmm mystery <laughs> i use my drapes as bed sheets and clothes <laughs> then i hang myself up as drapes we'll dress up in fancy dress what will that solve <laughs> will look good <laughs> Oh, look, I said the poor thing again. <laughs> Did I point out how poor I am? <laughs> no. So, they're so poor that there is no poor music chime anymore. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> well, like, we even were joking around it, but we missed the dog that looked like Pow. What was the poor Pow? <laughs> is there a dog economy? <laughs> and Bart in a poor way. <laughs> Fuck. It's like Pow, Pow, poor. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor, that's what poor. it says. <laughs> God, this town is the worst. I feel so bad. Oh, man. You thought you hated Lower Town. Just wait till we get to Upper Town. 